everyone, this is Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and this is episode five of our Beginner's Guide to Sewing. Today, we are going to learn how to clean your machine, oil your machine, and you are gonna learn how to become the master of tension. So let's jump right in and learn how to clean. Cleaning your machine comes down to three things, preventing dust, cleaning, and deep cleaning. First, you should prevent dust from collecting by always covering your machine with either a cloth cover or a hard cover whenever your machine is not in use. Second, the frequency you need to clean and deep clean varies by machine and by how much you use your machine. Luckily for regular cleaning, it's super easy and all you need is a lint brush, the one that came with your machine, or something like a paintbrush. So go ahead and unplug your machine, remove the thread, and the needle. First, let's take this bad boy apart. We need to use the little screwdriver that came with the machine to remove the faceplate by unscrewing this little screw in the back. And now let's remove the needle plate. And now we need to remove the bobbin holder. Now let's do it again on a top loading bobbin machine. It's very, very similar. Now you need to thoroughly dust all of these areas with either your lint brush or a paintbrush or your pressurized can of air. Gently go as far into the machine as you can, being careful to get all those nooks and crannies. Generally, you should clean the bobbin case, under the needle plate, the feed dogs, the face plate area, every few projects or every 15 to 20 hours of sewing. However, if you sew projects that kind of shed heavily or have a you know nice big like pile to them, like velvet, you need to dust twice as often. Try to get it as white glove clean as you can because this is a big step in the right direction as far as preventing all those mistakes later down the road. This is a big, big preventative measure with troubleshooting because it's one less thing you have to think about and a dirty machine will lead to thread nests, to messed up stitches. It's just a big, big mess. So make sure your machine is always nice and clean. Now, oiling your machine depends on which machine you have and what your instruction manual says that you need to do. So for the brother, our instruction manual says that we need to oil frequently. It's suggesting that for this machine, we oil pretty much every day if we're gonna sew every day. Where are there other machines, more advanced machines that tell you you never need to oil, but really you kind of do. So let's just go over this one first. We're gonna go over the bobbin area and then we'll go up here to the needle plate area. So it'll say in your manual where you need to oil, right? So once us to oil the bobbin area first, so we're taking our sewing machine oil, only using sewing machine oil, never anything else, just the sewing machine oil. And it wants us to lubricate right there. So that part is, that area is kind of hard to get into. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, couple drops on here, then brush it in there. And then I will just turn my rotary hook system a few times. And that's what's gonna spread the oil out. Now the manual wants us to oil about five points underneath the face plate. So we'll take our oil and we're gonna position these gears so we can get to them easily. So like this one is far in the back, but that's too hard to reach. So I'm gonna move it forward a little bit and I'm just gonna start oiling all the moving areas as shown. It only needs a drop of oil. You really don't need a lot. These bottles will last you forever. Just everywhere it says that you need to do it. And now we're gonna plug in the machine and run it at full speed so we can really work in the oil. This way it prevents the oil from getting on your thread and on your fabric. That's really good enough. And like I said, this all depends on how often you use your sewing machine. You also wanna take this in every now and again, again to get it professionally oiled. Um, once again, depending how much you actually use your machine. So 99% of troubleshooting is all about prevention in the first place, making sure that as we did in the first video, that your machine is threaded properly and the bobbin is wound properly and inserted properly. So the biggest mistake people make with threading the machine is not getting the thread flossed in between the tension discs. 
The trick to that is to hold the top of your thread as you pull it through the machine. The second thing is people mess up with their bobbin winding. If you have any tangles or snags or uneven, you see how this is uneven and it has some of those icky snags in there, you're gonna have so many problems. So just make sure that your bobbin is always thread and that your thread is truly flossed in between those tension discs. Another problem is people will use the wrong needle. So like we said before, follow our needle chart or a dull needle. So be sure to change it every 15 hours. Now, sometimes I just do a little test. You know, it's like if it's if it feels dull to your finger, then it's definitely the time to change it. Or if you just don't know, just stay on the safe side and change it out anyways. Also, thread. Do not use cheap thread in your sewing machine. You will regret it. So there's a couple ways to tell if your thread is good or not. We have a whole blog article about this. You can hold your thread up to the light. And if you see many, many, many strands poking out in all different directions, that means you have a low quality thread. So this is a nice Guterman thread and I'm gonna do the snap test. If I pull it like this, it doesn't break, right? It's very strong. Now let's take some yeesh, bargain bin thread and watch what that does. If I hold it like this, it snaps right in two with any kind of pressure. This should never be used in your sewing machine. You can use this stuff for like hand basting, things you know you're gonna rip out, but for the most part, don't put it in your sewing machine, also because it produces too much lint. Now let's talk about every sewist's favorite subject, tension. Now there are a ton of different factors that come into play with tension. Thread weight, stitch length, fabric thickness and weight. It all can affect how the tension is formed and what your stitches look like. But it really doesn't matter. What you need to know is what bad tension looks like, what good tension looks like, and how to fix the bad kind. So first we're gonna form your good, perfect stitch. Keeping it in our middle area, in our automatic zone, which is why I told you to stay there. And we've got a normal stitch, your standard everyday stitch, right? So here we go, straight stitch. Only the needle thread should be showing on the top and only the bottom thread should be showing on the bottom. So only the bobbin should be showing on this end. Now you can kind of see tiny little specks of blue popping out here and tiny little specks of orange popping out there if you look under a microscope. But that's just because they're contrasting threads. You're gonna see in a minute what it really looks like to have some messed up tension. So let's go ahead and reduce the tension to zero and see what happens. Everything looks fine and dandy on the top, right? Well, we're gonna flip it over and look at this hot mess on the back. Because the needle tension is so loose, the bobbin threads tension can easily pull the needle thread to the back of the fabric. So this is a really weak seam. See how easily that can be pulled? That is no good. So in this case, I would have to increase my needle tension. Now let's go ahead and super increase the needle tension and see what happens. Now that the stitch tension has increased so much, you can see that the fabric is somewhat puckering and bunching up together a little bit when compared to the top one. This is because the needle tension is way too tight and the orange is popping up just a little bit more than it should be. Now on a lighter fabric or a heavier fabric on the extremes, you might see the orange pop up a little bit more. But also, if I try to pull this, it's very tense. So I would have to really work out all of those puckers by going like this. If you find yourself having to work out the puckers, your tension is too tight. Now, because I've been messing with my tension so much, you can see something doesn't look right here. I have three threads popping out where only one should be popping out. All of these blue threads that are supposed to be just coming from the needle are coming from the bobbing plate as well. So this means that I've got a tiny little thread nest down here. Sometimes a combination of things go wrong, causing the dreaded thread nest. The causes can be many things, from a dull needle, to tension, to bad bobbins. With a bad thread nest, you'll see the whole bobbin case goes off track. 
In this case, you have to completely remove the bobbin holder and the case, then reposition it back into your machine correctly. I also like to rethread my machine and pay special attention to how I'm doing it so I make sure I'm doing it correctly. And then I put my stitch tension back in the automatic zone. If it happens again, I'll definitely change my needle. Now when you're adjusting the tension, you really only need to adjust it a little bit at a time. Going from the extremes from zero to nine, those are just to demonstrate something to you. Normally you're only going to be adjusting a tidbit at a time to get that perfect tension. Now sometimes you do wanna dramatically reduce the tension and that's in instances like a basting stitch. These are super helpful. We'll learn more about them as we continue on with construction, but a basting stitch is a stitch that you know you're gonna be taking out. So the easiest way to do that is to bring your tension down really low to a two or a one or a zero, bring your stitch length up as high as it goes, and just sew. That way you're getting a nice loose stitch without risking getting a big thread nest because you've adjusted the tension to accommodate your new stitch length. Let me show you what that looks like. This is a basting stitch. And on the back, look, no big loops to risk any thread nests or anything. You see how the longer the length, the less tension you need. Now you remember how we created these big ugly loops on the bottom side of our fabric by creating a tension that was way too loose? Now we're gonna use the exact same settings we did to make this awful stitch and use them on this. Now I've got multiple layers right here and you'll see how with multiple layers, the stitch will form nicely and the balance will be even. You won't see any big loops on the bottom side of this fabric. And that's with the same tension settings that created this big mess. Once again, the thicker the fabric, the longer the stitch, the less tension you need. All right, now let's talk about bobbin tension. As I said before, you really don't need to touch the bobbin tension as a beginner. In fact, there are some machines where altering the bobbin tension actually voids the warranty. But it's important to know for future reference just in case you wanna do bobbin work like reverse embroidery. Both top loading and front loading bobbin cases have tiny screws that control the tension. By turning the screws to the right, you tighten the tension. By turning to the left, you loosen the tension. Now you can always do the drop test to check the tension and if it's appropriate for the bobbin thread you're using. By using a subtle yo-yo motion, drop the bobbin approximately nine to 12 inches. The force of slightly yanking upward should only cause the bobbin to drop an additional one to 1.5 inches. See, there should really only be mild resistance when pulling the thread from the bobbin case. If you do need to change your needle, make sure that the flat side is facing the back of the machine. There are some machines that have their needles installed differently, so double check your manual. Also, pay special attention that you have inserted the needle as far up as it can go and that the screw is nice and tight. If the needle falls out while sewing, it's because the screw isn't tight enough. Inspect your needle for any deformities by placing it on a flat surface. If you notice anything other than a perfectly straight shaft, toss it out. Whoosh, that was a lot of information to take in, but if you're not too worn out, be sure to visit us next week for episode six. We're gonna go over hems and elastic casing. We'll be back at the sewing machine. It'll be a lot of fun, a lot of new stuff to learn. And be sure to check us out on our social medias at sewingpartsonline.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, Twitter at sewingparts, Instagram, Pinterest, Google Plus, we're everywhere. And be sure to subscribe by hitting that button below for next week's sewing video.